Well, we're ending 2019 in style, it seems. Look at the market. It's still at the high point. The Sensex is up almost 300 points at, as we speak. And the Bank Nifty is up about 345 points as well. Um, let's do one thing. While we keep talking about the equity markets, let's also get some action going in the commodity space. Manisha Gupta is here to give us a roundup of all the currency and commodity market action today. Hi, Manisha. Morning. Morning, Sonia. Thank you for that. Well, you know, in the recent few days, we've seen the steel prices buzzing. And this week itself, we are up 1.5%. But when you look at this year, the Shanghai steel prices are down by 4%. The ICX steel prices down by nearly 10%. There have been concerns because of Brexit, because of the weak demand. We've seen the economic data come in on the weaker side. And the markets also have seen the US and China trade uh, fight actually take its toll. But that really seems to be changing right now because the markets are anticipating better demand going forward. And we also are looking at the US and China trade talks actually going in quite at the optimistic pace. The other thing that has been bothering steel really is the high uh, uh, ingredient cost. If you look at the raw materials like iron ore, that is uh, gained up uh, quite strongly. The nickel prices are up by nearly 30% as well in this year. So that has been yet another botheration for the steel prices. But as I said, there are expectations that we are looking at get better data going forward and that could perhaps improve the margins, industry and the demand as well going forward there. Kunal Shah of Nirmal Bank now joins us with his sense on that space. Kunal, hi. We keep talking about the non-ferrous metals but in the ferrous space as well, we've seen iron ore one of course continue to run up. Steel has been under some pressure but the last uh, few sessions have been positive. How, uh, how do you look at this recent rally and do, it, do you see it sustainable? Uh, I think this rally is sustainable. The fact is that uh, the phase one of US-China trade deal has been signed and after that we've seen 8% varying Chinese uh, steel table prices in last one month. Uh, now coming back from international to the domestic front, uh, in domestic uh, uh, scenario, we, in spite of the ongoing slowdown what we've been hearing from last three months, uh, we've seen steel prices in last uh, three to four days have moved up by almost 2,000 rupees. And uh, we have a, like you rightly pointed out, we because of the higher raw material prices, uh, iron ore mainly, uh, steel prices are moving up. And the scrap market, the steel scrap market is very tight in India, lower availability in the scrap market and higher prices is also causing prices to move up. And above all of these, if things are stabilizing in India and internationally, which it looks very much uh, on, the, on the cards, then I think steel is the commodity to watch out for going forward in January, February. We are yet to see any production cut uh, so far not announced by China, but going forward we are going to see also uh, production cut because of the winter pollution problem in China. You always see in the month of January they are, uh, announce uh, production cut in steel and aluminum. So that is also remains to be seen. So I think it, it looks very bullish. We have we have not, not seen any humongous rally, but I think we are at the cusp right now that the steel prices are going to uh, witness a major breakout and we are going to see a very bullish trend for the steel uh, in next three months. So a view for the quarter for the steel looks very bullish. Uh, the fact is that the lag effect of the US-China trade war is preventing any major upside. A lot of traders, investors are worried about what will happen, whether the phase two of the US-China deal will take place or not. But the fact is, the phase one is signed. Uh, there is a strong likelihood that the phase two and three will be also done. And I think that that worry of US-China trade war is still, uh, you know, playing a major lag impact on the minds of investors. But I think one should come out of it, and steel is going to rally. It's the commodity to watch out for. Okay, you know, Kunal, I was watching for various uh, metal forecasts for 2020, and steel doesn't really uh, feature into that because what most people are very bullish on is perhaps copper, nickel, cobalt, uh, in in that order, really. So, what's your sense? Uh, the much of the negativity that steel prices have seen in this year, do you see it converting? And as you were mentioning, December clearly has been a, a, a quite a firebrand of a month. How much of further gains then are you expecting in the next quarter, first half of 2020, perhaps, if, if we do take in the US and China impact? I think, uh, like, like uh, I said uh, uh, at the start, majority of the worries are over as far as the glo global problems are concerned. So maybe Brexit, maybe US, China. So I think we are going to see a good bit of uh, uh, strength in the economic activity in the first quarter at least. We are going to see Japanese government likely to announce new stimulus. Already European Central Bank has announced new uh, uh, stimulus. And US, uh, we've already seen easing of rates. So I think this is a perfect storm for the base metal and even for the ferrous metal. Uh, the 
one should just overcome the hang of overhang of a us china trade war and that is the major you know catalyst none of the investors traders are willing to get over it and i think this is the right time uh, i am very bullish i i think another 5 to 8% upside in steel in this quarter is very likely okay Okay, all right, uh, Kunal, as well as Manisha, thanks very much for joining in and uh, taking us through all of those cues in the commodity space for the markets doing well. Future retail.